Good morning everybody and welcome to Midweek Holy Communion on Maundy Thursday, really important day in the church's calendar and we're progressing our way gradually through Holy Week. Today of course is also April Fool's Day so I hope that you've also managed to stay safe and not be humiliated too much by anybody so far. So let's begin shall we? We meet in the name of God Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. And now we have a moment to confess our sins to God. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father, but we have turned aside from your way. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your word is a light on our path but we have walked in the darkness of our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Good Shepherd, leading us to everlasting life, but we have not listened to your voice. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The collect for today, Maundy Thursday. Let us pray. God our Father, you have invited us to share in the supper which your Son gave to his church, to proclaim his death until he comes. May he nourish us by his presence and unite us in his love, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Now today's Gospel reading, which comes from John chapter 13. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean and you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was, to, who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. 
Well, that's quite a well-known story, isn't it? But one which it's good to hear uh, as often as possible, I think. And I sometimes wonder, particularly today, April the 1st, if um, in the first century AD, in the days of Jesus and his disciples, whether they had any, any equivalent to April Fool's Day. I've no idea, possibly not. But if they had done, I reckon that the disciples, when Jesus took off his outer garments and took a basin and filled it with water and started to wash their feet, they must have thought that this was an April Fool's joke. Because a washing of feet was something that was done usually in a house to guests by the lowest slave of the lot. The one lowest in the pecking order would have been given that very menial task to do. Because in those days, of course, the washing of feet was really important. People walked long distances on dusty, dirty roads with um, sandals, so their feet got very, very dirty and smelly. And when you entered somebody's home, uh, what the lowest and most menial slave would do for you would be to wash your feet and to anoint them sometimes with perfume as well. And it was something which was really only done by the lowest of low of the slaves. It's difficult to think of anything today which is equivalent. Maybe someone whose sole job is to clean toilets or something like that might, 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 might be something equivalent. But, you know, when the disciples saw uh, Jesus doing that, they would have been absolutely gobsmacked. Jesus, someone whom they got to know and were beginning to believe was the Son of God, the Messiah, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, started to take on that menial, lowest, most disgusting of tasks, washing of people's feet. Little wonder that they all started saying, no, Lord, you mustn't do this. You can't do this for us. This is not your role. You are the Lord. You are the Messiah. You are the Son of God. You can't start washing people's feet. It's ridiculous. But Jesus persisted and said, no, the kingdom of God is all about service and being servants and serving each other. And I am setting you an example, as an example which I want you to follow and teach others to follow. And so, a Maundy Thursday is an, is, a, is an occasion when we can actually remember that the Christian faith is all about service. Being a true disciple of Jesus Christ is all about serving others, taking a lower place for ourselves and taking on tasks that we wouldn't necessarily want to do and being willing to serve other people as best we can. St Paul summed it up quite well when he wrote to the Philippians and he said this in Philippians chapter 2 verses 3 and 4. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. So much of life today, both in the Christian church and outside of the Christian church, is about selfish ambition. People wanting the best for themselves. And to be true disciples, and this is a really difficult thing to do, we need to be willing to regard others as better than ourselves and in humility be willing to serve them as best we can, even if that means doing things that we wouldn't particularly want to do. So on this Maundy Thursday, here's an, ex here's an occasion for us to reflect on our own discipleship and the degree to which we are willing to serve others. It's a difficult thing to think about and to reflect on, but it's a really crucial and vital thing that we do so. Amen. So now we're going to come to our intercessions. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, on this special day in our calendar, Maundy Thursday, we pray that we and all our brothers and sisters in Christ, both in this country and around the world, will begin to really understand what it means to be servants of others. Help us to find opportunities in our daily lives where we can serve other people, not begrudgingly, but with joy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray at this time also, this special time of Easter, with these 
uh, days like Good Friday and Easter Sunday coming up, that the world at large would understand what the real meaning of this season is. Help us as Christians and churches, even in this difficult time of COVID restrictions, to point other people to Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection, and what the real meaning of Easter is. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for the effects of the coronavirus pandemic, and we pray that now that restrictions in this country have been eased a little, that people will remain sensible and stick to the guidelines that are still in place. We pray especially for our own town here at Southend, that as many people probably visit us over the weekend, that there will be common sense prevailing in areas where there are likely to be large numbers of people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And further afield, we pray for parts of the world where people are facing big difficulties. We think of the ongoing crisis in Myanmar. And we think of other flashpoints around the world where peace is so desperately needed. And we pray for those people and organisations who are, whose aim is to bring peace to those places. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And at this time of the year, our thoughts always go towards the Holy Land, the Middle East, the geographical place where these momentous events actually happened, the crucifixion and the resurrection. And we pray for that part of the world, so plagued over many years with unrest and violence and intolerance and prejudice, that at this special time of the year, peace would reign in that part of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And lastly, we pray for any we know personally who are in need today, whether it be through illness or through bereavement or loneliness or any kind of difficulty that they may be facing. We pray for them this morning, asking that the peace of this season would be with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so now we come to the virtual sharing of peace. Jesus says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let us share virtually with each other a sign of peace. And now we will continue with the Eucharistic prayer and our time of communion. And as usual, if you know the responses, join in with them at the right places. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right to give you thanks, Father most holy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For on this day he girded himself with the towel and, taking the form of a servant, washed the feet of his disciples. He gave us a new commandment that we should love one another as he has loved us. Knowing that his hour had come, in his great love, he gave this supper to his disciples to be a memorial of his passion, that we might proclaim his death until he comes again and feast with him in his kingdom. Therefore, earth unites with heaven to sing a new song of praise. We too join with angels and archangels as they proclaim glory without end. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, 
Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. How wonderful the works of your hands, O Lord. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embraced a people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread, in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, and, taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation, that they may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Bring us at the last with St. Lawrence and all the saints to the vision of, the, of that eternal splendour to for which you have created us through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, with whom and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. So, as usual, I will now take the bread and the wine on behalf of all of us. And we continue to pray that it won't be very long now before we can do this together in church again. And now the post-communion prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. So that brings us 
more or less to the uh, end of our service of midweek Holy Communion, all but the last final prayer and blessing. Thank you for joining me this morning for this short act of worship. I hope that you'll have a good rest of today, Monday, Thursday, and that for you, Good Friday and Easter Sunday will be very special times <clears throat> of prayer, worship and celebration. And uh, I will see you soon after that. Now the final prayer and blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <clears throat>